Where are the dangerous places in the Philippines? Um, I've been asked this by several people. Um, the fact is, what is a dangerous place? The, the, I think that's why a lot of the, the other guys don't respond to this. Um, because the Philippines generally can be pretty dangerous. Um, crossing the road, for example, um, vehicles take right away over pedestrians. So if you're not used to that, that, that could be dangerous to some people. But if you're talking terrorism, um, places like Zambonga are notoriously dangerous. There's bombings there, kidnappings, kidnappings for ransom. Um, it can be pretty bad. Mindanao has a lot of bad areas, um, but it's also why people don't really talk about it because they can't actually clearly define where is safe. Now, from international media, you don't hear a lot of these issues that go on there. Um, in Mindanao, you've got uh, MILF, which is a Muslim Islamic uh, Liberation Front. You've got Christian militia. You've got government troops. You've got um, special forces from other countries involved in there, trying to do whatever they're doing. I don't understand because... Um, half the problem is related to politics and greed it's not actually about the place itself or religion um, but nobody really talks about it because it's a political thing so Mindanao bits and pieces of it probably three quarters of it um, can be quite dangerous Zambonga wouldn't touch with a barge pole um, the whole there's like central areas. There's also um, areas such as, uh, I'll try to think of the name of the place. I can't really think of the top of my head. But what you find is, except for Zambonga, because <laughs> they still kidnap people out of the hotels in Zambonga from what I've read before. Um, places like Davao in, Mindanao are fairly safe. Um, fairly, I leave that one open because I'm not saying a hundred percent because nowhere is. Um, I will say that the whole round where the port area and the city side are uh, controlled by government, it's safe. Um, but you do have the odd police ambush now and again. Um, I think a few years back there was 11 uh, police killed on the whole in the central region which is sort of like jungle um, I haven't been there myself but just from what I've seen on sort of Google Maps and in the media um, the central area is a bit of a no no go area um, but mainly the cities are fine there's, a, there's multitudes of reasons going on here um, of why they're dangerous. First thing is Minda uh, Mindanao is full of natural resources. You've got oil there, you've got natural gas, you've got copper, gold, silver, and that's a major issue um, because everybody wants their hands on it. And to do that, you have to clear the land. Um, otherwise, you've got people who've got rights to what's on there because it's in their land. So easiest way of doing that is create a civil war. Now, that's my personal opinion. I'm not saying that's exactly what's happened, but if you want somebody else's resources, if you create a war around them, they start disappearing. So Mindanao can be a bit like that. Um, mountainous areas, different areas have mines. Mines are controlled by government. Mines are controlled by different groups. Because you also have NPA in the Philippines, uh, which are a communist movement that's been going for about 30 years. Now, in the media, you'll say the M MILF, they push the numbers down. NPA, they push the numbers down. Reality is, I would say, what's Journeyman um, videos on YouTube here. Uh, search for Journeyman and on the Philippines, you'll get an insight into that side. Because personally, poverty doesn't reduce these numbers, it increases them. It's a bit like um, 
You're hungry in the street, you got nothing. You join a militia. The militia will feed you, clothe you, train you, and look after you. Which one are you going to go for? And that's all I'm saying on that. I mean, at the end of the day, that's, that's, that's what I'm thinking is going on. Um, because the militia is more likely to look after the people than the government. Um, but like I said, personal opinion. I make that very clear. <laughs> I'm not a politician here. Um, but I would say the numbers are growing, not declining. Um, there's no reason why they would decline unless they, they were napalmed or something. It just wouldn't make any sense. Um, but I say watch journeyman videos because it will actually give you a understanding of why things are the way they are, but also it puts it in context because the media actually reduces the figures, fudges them a bit, manipulates it, makes it all sound a bit, it, the militia, are, you, you know, you already know it. I mean, it's the same that goes on in Iraq and everywhere else. The, there's a big manipulation thing goes on with propaganda. If you haven't got a voice, somebody will push it from the other angle and that's what goes on. But I would say most cities are fine. Um, you'll find the expats already in most places. So scout around the forums and stuff to say, is anybody in wherever it is? And they'll tell you. Um, not all expats are good people, by the way. <laughs> um, oh, okay, I'll, get, I'll give you an example. This guy was renting a house and he had this German guy stay with him. So they're friends. The, you know, whatever for whatever reason, I, I don't know them personally, uh, you know, what their connection is with each other. So the one guy stops with him for a few days, gives him a spare key. Um, when he leaves, the house is robbed within a week. There's no sign of breaking, etc, etc. The reason being that it was his friend who cut the key and then went and robbed the guy's house. He knew where his safe was, he knew where everything was in the property. So he just robbed it blind. Now, bear in mind, these people actually know each other and have for some time. And that's why I'm a bit wary about saying trust expats, because unless you actually know them outside of the Philippines, um, I'd be very cautious. Um, because there is a lot of bad people there. There's a lot of people with no money and they will prey on new people coming into the Philippines. Expats are probably one of the worst things in the Philippines. <laughs> um, there's some great guys there, but there's also some really, really bad people. Um, there was an American top wanted guy, number three, um, last year, the year before, was coming, picked up and taken back to the US. That guy was a serial rapist or something. He was living out in an island somewhere. So don't think everybody that you meet is your friend. But also, if somebody's offering you information and advice, they're either going to be a very genuine person or ask why are they helping you and that's all i'm saying because you've got to make these judgments yourself i can't do everything for everybody it's just like switch this on don't trust anybody um once you've known people a while you can trust them i mean i've, I've got friends that i trust a lot you know they i trust them with my wife and kids which is that sort of shows you the the level of trust we have, but that relationship is already five years old. Um, it's not the guy I met last week. <laughs> um, so yeah, you need to be aware that there is dangerous areas, but also every city's got one. You, where, where you live, just think where you live. Is it nice where you are? Where in your city is the bad area? Why wouldn't you go there? And that gives you the same thing that you'll get anywhere in the Philippines. So you'll hear people say, I live in poor areas, nobody bothers me. There's a reason for that. Most of them haven't got any money. There's nothing to take from them. If you were the guy with a big big house in, the, in a poor area, you may find it very different. Um, they might want to kidnap your kids. They, they might steal your resources, like for example, say you're doing a construction project. Um, you can afford to have all your steel bars stolen because you're rich anyway. And that's the mentality. So put it all in perspective. Um, 
And I would say Zambonga wouldn't go near it with a barge pole. Always people being kidnapped there. We would just search through the media, Zambonga, and it'll come up with stuff. Um, and I would also say stay away from political activities. Politics are one of the most dangerous things in the Philippines. Um, election times, they flood the streets with police and military, and that's not for uh, a celebration, but because the politicians do kill each other. So election time is probably the most dangerous time to be in the Philippines. But if you're not involved and stay to yourself and out of the way, it's not a problem. Because they're busy fighting each other and not really bothered by you. And let's be honest, most of these politicians have got more money than you've ever seen in your lifetime. Um, they, you're, you're insignificant to them. And that's what people forget. You're not, uh, poor people think you're a rich foreigner. Which Filipinos don't even see you as anything. You're not a threat, you're nothing. Um, you're not somebody that's important to them. You're insignificant. Unless you make yourself a problem, then that changes things. All right, thanks for watching.